to your presentation and uh, thanks a lot. Your turn. Thanks a lot. Well, um, as uh, Danis uh, presented me, uh, uh, sorry. Okay, hello, hi. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, hi. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, as uh, he has uh, just said, uh, I'm coming from uh, Frafos, and uh, maybe uh, any of you will know uh, JSIP, which is a JavaScript C library, for which I'm uh, one, one of the main authors. And um, today, uh, along with my colleague, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, WebRTC and why and how to use it as a um, platform, as a service for what uh, we're going to use OpenStack, and see, we'll talk about it later. Uh, the introduction, uh, initially, what we will go to see is uh, we're going to use the JSC API to create simple applications, simple, simple services uh, on top of Open, OpenStack, and of course, in the server side, we will use the Frafos WebRTC component, which, which is uh, empowered SEMS with WebRTC capabilities as well as a WebSocket for uh, transport along with uh, uh, OpenSSL, web, WebSocket Secure, of course, and OpenStack as an infrastructure. Well, something that uh, is going maybe to annoy many of you is that uh, we are uh, seeing that the, the a tendency of voice being the um, more often less and less the target product. Uh, but uh, being it more like an add-on for other applications. Like uh, some years ago, everyone uh, used to do business with uh, a voice, with also with, with video, and that, war, that was their main way for communications. Nowadays, uh, the web people, web guys has win this fight, well, this isn't, isn't even a fight, but uh, this, this field, web, the web, the HTTP field has win in uh, applications uh, in uh, real time also, uh, now real time communications with uh, WebRTC, and uh, we want to, to go there. We want to, uh, to go with web people because those are where uh, all the people is using uh, internet applications, the, the uh, day by day uses are based on the web. So what we want to do is give them uh, simple tools to add media, voice, uh, or video to their applications and um, without having them to concern about the infrastructure uh, or even about the underlying protocol in this case, SIP. That's why we believe that uh, being the, the main target uh, uh, web applications, which are made really fast, which are every day we can see new, new tools to create faster uh, web applications. So we want to give uh, developers a simple API so they can bring media to these applications. Uh, the, if you can see the the, the orange uh, arrow uh, is the the platform as a service, which is composed by virtual machines, uh, Amazon Network, uh, OpenStack, or uh, whatever you like, and the typical uh, web applications in which we are uh, or which are our target are already. HTTP are already done, are applications that, uh, which are the main target of the business and for which a voice or video is just an, an add-on, an, an additional uh, requirement or, or a, a tool that they could use. So for this, we use, of course, a browser and also a mobile devices and the, the cloud, which is... Uh, as I said, based on uh, Amazon, OpenStack, or, or any other. Just as a simple example, um, we built a, a simple uh, voice conference service based on the SEMS web conference module. 
in just a couple of weeks. What, uh, this time, the time we spent uh, making the service was only used for the website. Uh, the, 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 the web does only use the API that we provide. And even in our case, the web developer didn't know about ZIP, didn't know about WebRTC at all. The only thing he did was just using the API and concentrate in the business, in the target, which was the conference service, without even knowing about WebRTC, RTP, or anything else, okay? So, the main, my main target, my message here is that uh, since we can see, we see that the media is less and less the main target, we want to give people the chance to concentrate on their main business, which are in this case the web applications. And now uh, we will see, uh, I don't know, some, some of you maybe you have already seen, but we will see some simple examples on how easily we can create uh, simple applications using uh, JSZIP. For this, we are going to Okay, this, uh, uh, in this web page, Frafos, we show some documentation and also some uh, examples. Uh, and here we can find, well, here are two points that I would like to underline. One of them is the typical click to dial button that, uh, well, you all know in the old all, how many old ways there were to create a simple a, a click to dial, how many artifacts were behind a click to dial some time ago. Right now we can do a click to dial by just copying a couple of lines of code. In this case, the same way you can find, a, a, you can put a, a Twitter button or a Facebook button in your web page by just copying a couple of lines of, of HTML code. Uh, we manage to do just the same. What we do is, uh, well, even if you don't, you don't see, I will tell you, this is an HTML uh, button element, and then uh, we, in this script line, we download a small library which contains, what, which makes use of JSZIP. So here, you can even uh, design the behavior and the, in the and the look and feel of the button. For example, I'm going to create a medium-sized button. You can see that this is changing. So, and in real time, we are generating a different code for the button, so you can just uh, copy that, uh, that uh, couple of lines, paste in your HTML, and then you will see the button in, in the HTML, and Okay, I think it's time for a for a demo. This 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 button is one of is is going to make hopefully a, a call. It's it's already connected to the WebSocket server. That's why this it's got the the blue color. Uh, he will make it will make a call to one of our WebRTC gateways, and then it will call a. a, a uh, a non-WebRTC VoIP uh, service to reproduce a, a demo a music on hold. Okay, I would like to open the, even if I know that you won't be able to see the, the console, here we can see some uh, JSZIP logs. So I don't think this, will, this could be, well, there was a WebSocket disconnection, the WebSocket connection, JSZIP reconnects automatically. Okay, let's make a call. It's asking us for uh, for uh, access to the media device, and I don't have. Uh, I can't. I cannot hear it. I don't. It's. This is something like. Uh, I think that. Uh, well, there's media inside. The the ice connectivity has been completed. Just in case someone is aseptic, I will just. I, we will check that uh, RT is flowing. Uh, 
Okay. So we can see in real time that we are receiving the RTP. I'm sorry we are not listening. I think it's something to do with the sound system here. So for Friday that I'm giving a talk about uh, JSIP and building applications with JSIP, I will uh, make sure that uh, it's working, but... Um, can we do it <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. So you can trust me, there, there's uh, audio in there. Uh, okay. Now, uh, do I have uh, three, four minutes, or? No. Okay. Yes. Can, I, can I spend three or four minutes okay. more? Yes. So I can spend three or four minutes more. I just want to, exp to make you see how we see uh, a, te a te telephone can be built on top of uh, uh, a web page. This is, uh, with, the, with these lines, we are, this is the configuration, the JSON, this JSON makes a configuration uh, object. One of the lines, which is the password, is not mandatory. So with uh, two elements of a JSON, we can create a user agent, a JSIP user agent, and then we start it. Uh, in the, the time we start it, it will just register itself. Uh, I'm afraid you won't be able to see it very well, but we have to try it. I will try to be fast. Okay, so I will uh, execute this code, this JavaScript code right here. Oh, and what we see is that uh, a user agent has been created and a registration has been made with the provided uh, credentials, username and credentials. So the only thing that I, I, wanted, I want you to see is how simple we can create, uh, we can use JSIP to build uh, uh, our uh, WebRTC services. There are, here in this page, I, I won't be stay longer, so you can check it this in this URL, URL and uh, you can go uh, directly to JS Fiddle, which is a service from which we can see the HTML, the JavaScript, the CCS, and run in real time our code. As a very brief example, I will take uh, this one, which is just uh, this in uh, HTML creates a button, and whenever we press the button, we register or we unregister. We, this is the, the user agent configuration. We define the register and unregister events, event callbacks that will provide uh, us uh, JSIP. And here, whenever we register, we will see that if, whether we are registered or not, Whenever we press it again, we will unregister, and see that uh, we will see that we are not registered anymore. So, this is all from from my part. Uh, I hope uh, I have transmitted the fact that it's really easy with the proper API and uh, underlying platform to build uh, WebRTC services with uh, the Frafos infrastructure and gateway and JSIP. Okay, so turn for my colleague. Okay, uh, OpenStack pays pass. We start by the objectives. We need the simple integration for less errors, uh, minimum cost, for minimum of extra traffic processing needed for the integration. And then we need to scale up our resources. Uh, and we need to monitor the services we have on the cloud and the, uh, achieve minimum delay, uh, caching when possible, and pass traffic passing the shortest geographical path. And of course, no single point of failure. And clean shutdown when we want to scale down or kill uh, resources we need to have no state. So um, the automation, why we need automation? Because we need less errors and for better customer's experience when we ha have uh, high demand, we add servers and lower cost because we, when we have lower demands, simply we remove servers. The 
mainly we have this picture. We have uh, what is called auto-scaling group. We have the resources and we have the policies which we want to apply on these resources. Uh, mainly we have the WebRTC cloud servers and we have load balancers. And the resources, which is here in our case, the, server, the servers, scale up and down based on the predefined policies. The policies are defined in a text file, simple text file. And then, um, sorry, this is okay. We need to define what is called heat template. The template is uh, static architectural design of your application. You write your architecture in a text file, and then the compilation of this file is just creation of the resources. The file is uh, in this syntax, hood or YAML or JSON. Here, for example, we define the auto scaling group, and uh, we can define custom uh, types, like here, the server. This is defined, like, like in programming, we, we, we can define something in a separate file and we can link all files together. And the compilation of all of these is the creation of the resources. So this is, uh, is defined in a separate YAML file and linked to the main template. And when we define, for example, this is a file and then we map it to this type and this is called custom type and then we put it in the main template. And when uh, when the template is ready and we, okay, we told the template what we want for resources, then we need to create the, this template. So we use the hit client. Uh, for example, here, stack01 uh, is the name of the, of the, uh, <laughs> the stack or the resources. And then uh, the template uh, YAML is the main uh, template file. And then who create the resources is called the orchestration service. In OpenStack, it's, it's called HEAT. It is the orchestration tool used for create resources, described in template, configure resources, installing packages maybe, and auto-scale the resources. So we write in the template how we want to scale our resources. For example, we define in the template, we want when, when the CPU, for example, is higher than 80%, we want to add one server. This is policy, and we define this policy in the template file. And then HEAT, when it, it wants to compile or validate and then compile this template, it's contact with different OpenStack components to create the resources. For example, it creates alarm by contacting Silometer, which is a monitor, uh, metering service. This is the original picture, HEAT engine. It uh, consume the template and uh, create the resources, for example, many servers, and inject if we have metadata in the server. And then, for example, it's uh, the heat engine tell the silometer, okay, when the, for example, when the CPU is higher than 80, please tell me. Then the silometer will send the alert using the heat. With hook, okay, now the time to scale up, for example, and then the heat will scale up, add, for example, one more server. But the problem that Silometer is designed for metering and not for monitoring. For example, we can define application service level monitor uh, metrics, for example. Um, so um, the Silometer is not defined as um, monitoring as service. It's not separate service dedicated for monitoring. So there is, for example, this mona it's new, uh, and it's for it's for monitoring, and we have agent must be installed on the uh, servers to report metrics. Um, currently, we are using Rackspace monitoring service. We have monitoring agent must be installed on the machine to report the metrics. The user can create their own checks, predefined or custom. We have, in case Rafos, we have the current calls, the number, the current, uh, the number of the number of calls, current co calls, and the registration and TCP's connections. Um, and of course, the monitoring service is integrated with the auto scaling to uh, th through webhooks. So when the 
uh, for example, this is a server with an agent, uh, send metrics to API metrics and monitoring service here, send alerts to the auto scaling, and then the auto scaling service will add resources uh, by contacting, for example, uh, Nova, which is the control node in OpenStack, which is responsible for creating server, new server, or delete server. For Rafas, we have this, as, as, as I said, registration calls and TCP, the monitoring agent installed on server to report the metrics. And we have push metrics as a plug into the uh, monitoring agent. So the, the plugin, it's bash script. It is an MP based. And it equals the metrics in this format. The name of the metric, the type of the metric, the value, and the unit. And then the agent takes the equal metrics and send it to the monitoring service using metrics API. Now, uh, the problem that there, there, there is no clean shutdown. When, we, when the auto-scaling policy is triggered, we want to add one, for example, we want to delete one server, for example. So Nova, which is a compute node, which is responsible for killing ser the server, kill the server immediately and hardly without um, waiting till the, for example, you have server, there is a active sessions, the Nova that does not need, wait till to drain the session, it kills the server directly and immediately in this priority. So we, in, the, in, the, in the case we have, in the gateway case, we have existing calls, and the in conference case, case we have um, uh, conference rooms, long sessions, and maybe some people will join their conference late. So we need shutdown control by the server, because the servers uh, know when it's ready to be died. So, what we, we, we will use what is uh, called uh, heat software deployment. It's uh, available since Icehouse OpenStack release. Um, we have a new resource type which can be defined in the template. This type, software config, can be defined on the template which defines the configuration which should be applied on delete. When, delete, when on delete, this configuration will be, will be applied. And software deployment, which bind the configuration with the lifecycle hook, which is in our case delete. And this uh, resource will wait the server till dr it drains its sessions. And then when it's finished, it will move to complete state. But we need the server to have some agent install. This is the, the, the agent. So we need to configure the server. This is also in the template. We need to define the user data format, software config. And we need to define the, the, uh, the transport, which is how the, the configuration will be pulled from heat to the server. And then we define the configuration. This is the script which is responsible for cleaning the server. Um, so uh, we have the group because we, ha we are using bash script, so the group is the script. And then get file, this is a file which is, uh, will, the heat will give it to the server to clean itself on delete. Because we will define now, we will bind this with hit delete. The configuration which we defined, delete config. First, we define delete config, and now we bind this to uh, delete uh, lifecycle hook, uh, like this. And then when the server is clean itself, and it has no active sessions, it can it will send a signal to hit, okay, I'm clean now, you can kill me, simply. Uh, this is using uh, heat API service. Uh, in conference case, we have uh, 
tasks. As I said, we, we have some people may join the conference uh, late, so we cannot isolate the node uh, completely. So uh, the server, which we want to, uh, to delete, will remove the flam load balancer so it will not get new traffic. But at the same time, we need the late join request. So the other servers will help this node to, uh, to, to redirect the late join request to the server through its public IB. Because it's still available using its public IB. It's removed from root balancer, but it's still available on the net. So when the server finishes, it sends heat signal to heat. Finished. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just <laughs> okay. I'm alone here. <laughs> okay. Yes, then I'm coming. Uh, just wait. South Germany is far from. Hi. So, um, since you have experience with uh, passing RTP inside virtual environment, what are the, the uh, disadvantages and whether you got any problems with uh, conversions between hardware and virtual when in, in terms of RTP processing? Yes, because when you move to virtual, you have the most, actually the problem is when you scale down. Because we have, you have uh, servers, and you have uh, the old balancer in front of it. So when you want to kill server, you want to, to kill it in a clean way. This is actually the problem. Otherwise, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not, not so difficult. And uh, probably another question related and maybe similar would be um, virtual environments, because they virtualize also the network interface and RTP, it's like tons of small packets. Do you see any loss in quality when you have, I don't know, yes, uh, a lot of active calls? So then it's like you create another virtual machine and then you load balance? Yes. Yes, I, uh, actually. Yes, uh, actually that's what uh, autoscaling is good for. Uh, if you are using a kind of uh, a kind of machines, virtualized machines that uh, you know you already know that support certain number of calls, uh, you can trigger an action to create another virtual machine whenever this this amount of calls ha have been reached. So you will get another machine. Okay. Another question, Dorhan. Hi. So from your experience, what was the worst thing about working with OpenStack? <laughs> <laughs> or would you actually consider it as usable for real-life deployments? What? But would you consider it as useful for real-life deployments at this stage? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> PayPal is using or not? Or I read different news. You don't need news. to buy hardware. You just uh, put your application, no, don't care about the architecture and the network. Just okay, this is the application. Let's rephrase it on... And if, your hardware, if your hardware be became old, it's, it's not your problem. It's the provider problem. You just uh, care about your service, your business. Okay, to rephrase on a different uh, perspective, how is the learning curve to be able to deploy OpenStack in a production ready fashion. How long it takes to learn it and actually do it right? Because we learn earlier CP it's easy to deploy. Yeah, what about easy. OpenStack? Yes, Plus, two months. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's easy. It's not difficult. It's just you you write templates and you just you have to know the context of the template. How to to tell the the template the heat, how what you want for resources and how to define the policies and so on. 
and select in between, as far as I know, there are a couple of options for different components of the OpenStack. Yes, you need to know, of course, the, the components, the, how they, they interact with each other. Mm. So it took us 15 years to get with SIP here. How long will it take with uh, OpenStack for the crowd to get it done properly? One year? Maybe. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Other questions? OpenStack, WebRTC, here one. Um, on the numbers, how many contemporaneous calls? How many? Uh, how many concurrent calls can you handle in the virtualized machine? Or we don't can you, know. Can you give us an idea? <laughs> I don't know. So because it makes a difference if you if you if you scale up every hundred calls or you just you, know. uh, you can write a policy when the, the mm. server is overloaded, just create another server. Or you can okay when. When this server is overloaded, for example, we won't, we can, can create two, three. Well, of you, have to, you need to test this on your application and how um, nothing. Uh, of course, it depends on the hardware you're using, and of okay. course, it depends on the processing you're doing uh, on the RTP, RTP side. If you are encrypting, decrypting, if you are using uh, ICE or you are recording, but. Uh, of course, uh, you won't get as, as in a single machine as many calls as you could get in a standalone server. But the aim of the, of the auto scaling is uh, to, by using uh, as many virtual machines as you need to fulfill your service. And uh, the, the aim is to have always as much hardware running as calls you are expecting or as calls, as calls you are running. So you don't have extra hardware just uh, waiting. But of course, less than in a standalone server. So um, again, kind of rephrasing, have you two kind of, I don't know, a prototype, let's say a virtual machine with two or three cores and I don't know, four giga of memory or have you measured for a specific type of virtual machine just give an example 100 megs of no we don't we don't have a, a, a table with this uh, measurement uh, just like hel hello we are we are in our uh, in applications we have uh, already de developed uh, we we note uh, which kind of service we, we can use for example for the conference service uh, the cheapest uh, server you can find, the virtual server you can find, can support four or five participants. If you are using WebRTC, decrypting and encrypting, if you want something else, you have to go for a, for a higher uh, machine. Okay. But we, we don't have that numbers. Okay. One more question, Jiri. It's not actually just a question. I think. Uh, uh, it's not a question, it's a comment or a suggestion to rephrase the, uh, the question as you rephrase it. Because I think with uh, what I have noticed that it really, it is uh, measuring performance related to a box is just absurd because uh, you have with the clouds, you, you don't have, uh, and that's what we are all uh, used to, uh, but uh, in the cloud, I think you have to measure it by, by the doors because first of all, you never know what you're, it's not you see is what you get. Uh, there is no SLA with Amazon or any other type of cloud providers. So it's really hard to say what, uh, what you're uh, getting performance-wise uh, in absence of any SLA whatsoever. So eventually, what, uh, if you don't want to try to use that, is what you end up as you measure it against the cost of the virtual server. And uh, probably that's a uh, new matrix that should be established because the performance uh, is irrelevant, invisible, and uh, often uh, not uh, what it has been promised to be. Okay, yeah. Last question, anyone? Just uh, before uh, closing, here, Giacomo. A simple one, but tough. No, simply about the um, multi-party, in particular involving video. 
Is there anything specific in the architecture that you designed for this type of scenario? Not yet. Uh, we provide the uh, peer-to-peer, point-to-point uh, -point, uh, video connection, but uh, uh, if it's still working in the, in the multi-party video, we don't have it yet. So we support uh, the audio conference, but uh, not video yet. Okay, thank you, Jose. Thank you, Binan. Uh,